Today in the news, AMD releases their noise suppression tech and we got some RDNA 3 and Zen 4 leaks. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. And boy, do we have a lot to cover since I kind of waited to get ourselves a, a little roundup of AMD specific news. So first, let's talk about Adrenaline. That's their driver software, and the update just got released. In it, we get a feature that was leaked last week, AMD noise suppression. And it sounds all right. I tested it for a few minutes on this PC, and while it does the job, it lacks tweaking. For example, the feature in the app is just on or off. You don't really get a slider like you do with NVIDIA Broadcast. Plus, I could hear key presses here and there while typing. I give it a C for coolness, but it definitely would not pass the barnacles test like RTX Voice did. I'm vacuum and a fan on the floor. I'm gonna enable the effect right now so you guys can see what it does. Okay, the effect is enabling. Okay, right now, this is RTX voice enabled. Well, I've got this running right here. I got a leaf blower. I got a vacuum cleaner. I got a Bornado fan and an air conditioner in the background. And I'm even gonna try talking normally like this. Can you guys hear my voice when I speak at a normal level? I mean, that was kind of insane. Anyways, that driver update also brings some performance improvements with OpenGL apps. According to AMD, in Minecraft at 4K with settings at fabulous, their GPUs saw their frame rate almost double. Now, that is some serious optimizations. So that's some cool stuff, AMD. But now let's move on to the more unofficial stuff, AKA some leaks. Now that we know that Nvidia is sort of in trouble with their GPU lineup, and that they might only release one GPU in 2022, things seem to have shifted on the AMD side too. Early on, everything pointed at a release that started with their mid to high end GPU, Navi 33. That's the supposed RX 7600 XT. And that card would have had RX 6900 XT levels of performance. Navi 31 and 32, that's the highest end models from the RX 7700 XT, or regular, up to the 7900 XT or 7950 XT. Well, those were rumored to launch next year. Now though, AMD is likely going to employ the same tactic as Nvidia. Twitter leaker, Graymon55, just confirmed that the Navi 31, so that's the 7900 XT, AKA the highest end chip, well, it would launch this year in November. Not only that, but Navi 33 would be announced in January at CES. As for performance for Navi 31, he thinks that it's about at the same level as Nvidia's insanely powerful AD102 chip, but of course, since both GPUs are still testing, we don't know what their limits are. I mean, you hear about the 800 watt AD102 chip with 48 gigabytes of uh, memory. That's wild. Anyways, he also thinks that the Zen 4 CPUs with 3D vCache might make an appearance in November too. But that's a lot to expect in the next three months. I guess we'll see. Then continuing with the red team, the company mistakenly revealed the naming scheme of the Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 series. And we also got one in a benchmark. So in AMD's own libraries, the naming scheme for the first AM5 family is 7600X, 7700X, 7900X, and 7950X. So nothing too shocking, though it's interesting to note that they went with 7700X rather than 7800X. It could be for marketing reasons. Maybe they're just leaving space up for a less confusing naming scheme. Instead of having two 7800X, but one with the 3D at the end, you'd get a 7700X and a 7800X. 800X 3D. Honestly, who knows why AMD did that? But what we know is that their 7600X was benchmarked on user benchmark. Now it's a bad website to do comparisons between Intel and AMD, but it's fine for the same brands in my opinion. According to the test, the 7600X is an absolute beast. It's still a six core CPU with 12 threads. And of course it's an engineering sample. So it might be an older chip, but look at that. This was compiled by Harukaze over on Twitter from various benchmarks he found on the website. And it shows that AMD scores 55% faster in single core when compared to the 5600X. That's just insane. When it came to multi-core though, things look a little bit different with a still impressive 23% uplift. So is this benchmark borked? Well, that's possible. I mean, 55% in single core should result in more than 23% in multi, right? 
Well, it depends on how the CPU behaves. I mean, back with Zen 1 CPUs like the 1700X, only two cores could go full boost. And over time with Zen Plus, Zen 2, and Zen 3, this expanded into a better average boost clock for all of the cores. That's thanks to all of the iterations of Precision Boost. Maybe AMD went back to that Zen 1 boost style in some way, and this is why we see this. If you want my honest opinion though, this benchmark feels completely borked. If 23% in multi-core is all we got for a 7600X, then AMD would be in danger. Keep in mind, I'm not mentioning the 12600K simply because once again, user benchmark usually favors Intel CPUs. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you'd like to talk about today's stories. As usual, it's right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.